Welcome to Help! I'm a parent, Christian parenting in the real world. We're your hosts, Drs. Claudio and Pamela Consuegra, and together we serve as the Directors of Family Ministries for the North American Division of the Seventh-day Adventist Church. Today we will be discussing helping our teens look beyond high school. Teenagers tend to deal with the present. They often don't look to see beyond the moment. As parents, it's important to teach them that the decisions they make now will impact their life tomorrow, and the groundwork they lay now will make a difference in their future. We're delighted to be joined by Pastor Dunbar Henry. He has served as a pastor, administrator, and educator, and currently serves as a religion teacher at Tacoma Adventist Academy. Pastor Henry, we are delighted to have you here, and we look forward to having this conversation with you. Thank you for inviting me. I'm looking forward to it as well. Thank you. Before we begin, though, we'd like to listen to what some of the parents express to us about their concerns they have for their children. Okay. My eldest daughter, you know, she graduated already from uh, high school and everything. And when she got to that point, it was like, okay, so what are you going to do? And she was still kind of trying to figure out, you know, what, what, I don't know what I'm going to do. You know, I don't want to think about that. It kind of like it jumbles in their mind and they're just mm -hmm. like, they shut down kind of a thing. I don't know if that's happened to you. And My son, uh, he was struggling with school and with getting his work done and so forth. And I said, you know, what are you going to do? You got to, you know, get this stuff together. You know, I did the whole dad thing, you know, mm -hmm. get this together. Mm -hmm. And he was like, oh no, it's okay. Because when I get to college, I'm going to do everything perfectly. <laughs> and I'm like, man, look, yeah. what you do now, that's how you're going to play the game later. So yeah, I know. I actually started a little bit early. I started more in elementary school getting okay. ready. Um, starting to groom him then saying, you know, okay, remember our goal is to go to college and graduate and to get a profession. Okay. And then eighth grade, it, we got really involved. Of course, his organizational skills were not that good. So we, <laughs> I had to put him into like one of those study organizations. Okay. I said, you know, you're going to wow. need your organization skills in high school and college. Mm -hmm. So I think it was good that we did start early. So it, it got the ball rolling. And then the light bulb went off in I guess in 11th grade, mm -hmm. he said, I want to study chemistry and I want to be an anesthesiologist. Wow. Yeah. But my son had, you know, he, want, he knew what he wanted to do mm -hmm. from the get go. But my son wanted to go to a two year college. And I was mm -hmm. like, no, university is what I'm planning for you. Mm -hmm. That's my plan for him. That was not his plan. So I got involved with the teachers, talking to them. And they said, you know, he's been a good kid. He knows what he wants. Just let him be. So sometimes we just have to watch what we interject because it's just what our plan is and not what theirs is. Or what true. God's plan is. What God's too. plan is too, right. Yeah, yeah I, I, I think that's the, the, yeah. the key. You know, how do I get them to start thinking about not what's going to be a good career, not what's going to make me a lot of money, but what is it that God put you here on this planet for? Pastor, you've been involved with young people pretty much all your career as a pastor and as a Bible teacher. You've seen firsthand those transitional years of the adolescents of 13 to 18 or so. How do you encourage your young people to look to the future and not just to today? That's a difficult question because you have young people in various stages of their development. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you don't want to, just like one of the parents said, you don't want to push them and, and squash them and kind of, you know, you want to let them grow. Yeah, but to form them by force. Yes, um, but you can guide and, and direct. That's one of the things that is a passion for me, I guess. Um, I've taught all the greats uh -huh. uh, in high school, and I am saddened by the curriculum that waits till senior year, really, mm -hmm. to talk about careers oh, and, yeah. you know, comparative religion. It's a little bit too late uh -huh. then. It, it is. So, so when should we start talking with our children about career I, I don't think you need to future. push them, but you need to give them some options and set the groundwork for principles uh -huh. that will guide their lives. I, I teach freshmen and sophomores now, mm. and we talk about that now. Yeah. Um, but a lot of them, and, and as they mature, I think, I pray, it changes. But a lot of them, the, the biggest concerns that they have are making money right now. Yes. Sure. Because yes. everything that they see in the media, yep. they're, they're 
there are people that make millions of dollars, and I, I compare that with Christianity, mm -hmm. yeah. people that make millions of dollars that don't even love the Lord. Yeah. And, well, why should I go through? I know people that barely have a high school diploma, yeah. and they're making millions of dollars. Right. Well, right. you have the sports stars, you have yes. the actors, mm -hmm. and you have people like, well, Bill Gates who dropped out of college. And Yeah, so how do you tell the, the kids, well, you may not be the Bill Gates or the sports person. Well, there, I, I remember there was one student that um, came, to, came to Tacoma Academy and uh, really to play basketball. Oh. And he was an excellent basketball player. Um, but I had them, this is when I was teaching seniors, mm -hmm. and I always had them do a career paper. Okay. And I said, um, what is going to be your career? I'm going to be a basketball player. And so as a result, you know, they had to do budget and everything, and his budget was based on, oh. and I said, no, you can't use that. You need to find a career. Sure. Because all it takes is one injury. One injury. That's right. That's, that's, that's right. And then it's gone. That's right. And so right. what are you going to fall back on? How many people that do you mm -hmm. know, yeah. talking to the kids, how many people do you know that are flat out broke in their 30s? Yeah. And they made millions of dollars. Mm -hmm. But now they right. can't do anything anymore. If well, they get to that point. The if they get to that, if they get to that point. What if they get injured while they're in college? Yeah. Absolutely. Yes. <laughs> you know, there's something. And, and I look at some of the sports stars who, um, who are going to school while they're playing professionally mm -hmm. to continue their degree. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and I try to, I try to tell the young people, you've got to have a plan. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have to be, you know, every single step planned right. out. But where are you going to be? What do you want to do? At least some goals what are your to look at. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes. <laughs> you know, think about those long-term goals. And then when you think about those long-term goals, right. and even those that play basketball who want, so how are you going to get to that point? Yeah. Mm -hmm. It doesn't just happen. Yeah. You know that. Yeah. And so you have to practice, which is the same thing with school. Be disciplined. Right. Right. And, and I have noticed, it's, it's amazing, I've noticed during the basketball season, the basketball players study. Oh. Because they know that if their grades drop, uh, they will sit on the bench. Of course, sure. of course. And then when the season's over, I see it plummet. I'm like, really? Mm -hmm. You know, there, there's got to be some consistency. What, what is your goal? There was motivation before. There was motivation. You know, you mentioned that as parents, we should be teaching our children those guiding principles mm -hmm. to help them make the choices. And I think you just mentioned one of those guiding principles is helping them really think through and have a plan, mm -hmm. you know, and actually put it in writing. Uh, that's a great idea. Are there other guiding principles that as parents we should be helping them think through? Well, I, I think you need to encourage them to let them know that, that you're going to make choices and, and changes. Nowadays, you know, when I was in college, um, I still changed my major three times. And that was back in the 70s. Mm. Um, and a lot of young people now, they're taking general studies at first mm -hmm. because they're not sure what they want. I said, that's fine. Do mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. Do that. Get all your groundwork out of the way because you're going to have to do that no matter what career you go into. Right, right. And that's why a lot of them are <clears throat> choosing to save some money and going to two-year mm -hmm. colleges yeah. because they're not sure yet. Yeah. Get your ground, you know, those general education courses. Uh -huh. And as you take them, you're going to find some, some area that you may want to concentrate on. Mm -hmm. That's fine. You know, some people do know. Yeah. And I, I found a lot of times, a lot of young people go into careers that their parents choose. Oh, sure. And they're not happy. Mm -hmm. It's almost like they are fulfilling their parents' dream yes. as opposed to their own. Yes, I've mm -hmm. seen that a lot. Yeah. And, and it's very hard to dissuade a parent or you know, you got to let them choose for themselves. Oh, no, they have to be there. And I think, you know, we saw that in the video clip mm -hmm. where it's, uh, one of the moms said, you their choice, to to their choice was not my choice. Yeah. Yeah. So sometimes as parents, we have these lost, lofty dreams or aspirations as to what our child is going to grow up to be. But uh, talk to the parents now about letting go of that. And that, and that's, and that's hard. 
it's very hard as a parent. We're, we're parents mm -hmm. uh, and watched our children grow uh, and go through all kinds of stuff. Mm -hmm. um, but I think one thing that one of the parents said that they started in elementary school. Yes. Teaching their child mm -hmm. organization. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And that's most important. And, and one, of the, one of the parents also said, my child says that when I get to college, everything's going to change. Yeah. And for some, that happens. Yeah. But mm -hmm. for the vast majority, those habits, I guess you would call them, those yeah. practices right. Yes. Right. that you have developed in high, elementary and high school yeah. carry right straight through. Mm -hmm. Well, for instance, the work mm -hmm. habits. You know, what, yeah. you, in, what you instill right. in your children where they're small, to take the trash out, to clean the room, mm -hmm. to study. All those are things that you can't wait till the senior year of high school before you get to teach them that. And I think you need, you know, one of the things I think that, that helps me in my communication with the young people is I show them my vulnerabilities. Hmm. Because when I was in high school, I didn't have to study and I could get B's. Mm. Mm -hmm. uh, and that was not necessarily an, an advantage. Yeah. And I told the young people, and then when I hit college, my first year of college, I was overseas. My first quarter was fun, <laughs> but I got a 1.9 GPA. Oh. Got my mm. first F in my entire life. That must have been a wake-up call. And it was. <laughs> and when I went home for Christmas vacation, I just knew, I knew my parents were going to, what are you doing? Because I was young in college. Sure. They didn't say a thing. Huh. It it blew me away, but I said, you know, I'm smarter than this. Mm. And it was it was when I decided mm -hmm. that I could do better uh -huh. that I changed my habits. And one of the things I tell my young people is, don't procrastinate. Mm. Mm -hmm. You know, when when my teacher told me that I had a paper that was due at the end of the quarter yeah. in college, yeah. I was generally done with it within the first two or three weeks. Sure, yeah. and then I could fine-tune it or whatever, and then all my friends, the Saturday night before the paper's due on yep, Monday, yep. they're up all night. I yep. said, hey, y'all want to go out and do something? No, we got a paper due. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm done. I did but, it a long time ago. But there again, you had that internal ability to look ahead, I to look you. to the future, to look what your responsibilities were, not for today. You didn't think, well, that paper's not due tomorrow. It's not even due next week. Yeah. So what do you think gave you that ability to, to really understand that, Pastor Henry, to look ahead, because that's, that's what we need to be teaching our children. Yeah. I think I learned that from my father. Um, you know, my father being a minister, he was a tough, tough disciplinarian of a parent. Mm -hmm. um, but just to, just to see his work ethic. Okay. Um, I think it really makes a difference for the young people to see how their parents mm -hmm. react to certain things, how they, um, their work ethic, how they do this. I can, I can still remember my father saying, when you wash the car, make sure you do the wheels. And I'm like, yeah. it's because like you're wearing a suit <laughs> and you have dirty shoes. Yeah. Everybody's going to be drawn to the shoes. Just yeah. the little, little things mm -hmm. that, that you build on. Yeah. And then, you know, I saw that and it didn't kick in until I was, I was probably 18. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Okay. Wow. So. Interesting. Again, we go back to the example of the parents. Yes, yes. We're going to continue this conversation here after a moment, but we're going to take a break now. And when we come back, we continue to talk about how to instill in our adolescent children those uh, hopes for the future and those goals for the future that they need to get on in life. Come back after a moment. You can probably already tell that we will not be able to cover every area, every concern, or every question you may have in the short time that we have together. Parenting will continue to produce new challenges and new questions every day. As our children grow and change, so will the parenting challenges that we will face. Therefore, our goal is to continue this conversation with up-to-date resources and practical parenting tips online via our website, helpimaparent.org. There you may keep updated on our newly released parenting resources, supplemental products, and find additional material for free download. You're also invited to subscribe to an electronic newsletter, read a blog just for parents, and much more. 
In addition to that website, we have a Facebook page where we post daily words of encouragement and resources. So look us up. Help, I'm a parent. And remember to share that Facebook post with the friends in your own social network. It is our desire that this resource will assist you in your God-given role as a parent by using principles that are firmly grounded in the Word of God. Now let's get back to our conversation with today's guests. Welcome back to our conversation with Pastor Henry, who is a Bible teacher and also a pastor and has worked pretty much his entire career with adolescents, with teenagers. Pastor Henry, before the break, you mentioned that you now teach your freshmen and sophomores or early in their high school career uh, about future career choices. What kinds of things do you do to guide them in that direction? Well, um, you know, spiritually, I tried to try to guide them and, and let them know that, mm -hmm. you know, the world that we're living in now is very much materialistic. Mm. And I try to let them know, yes, money is important. Mm -hmm. You know, the Bible says, you know, it doesn't say that money is the root of all evil. Right, right. It's the love of money. That's right. And so you have to choose something that will help you accomplish the goals that you want to. Right. However, um, you know, that Christian basis mm -hmm. uh, has to be, I try to instill in them, uh, the principle needs to be there. God is going to take care of you. I tell them that there have been times in, in, in my relationship with my wife, it's 37 years now, mm -hmm. that there have been years that it's been tough, you know, financially. Right. Uh, but I, I'm honest with them and say that when I put my tithe and, you know, pay my offerings, I have no idea how the money lasts. <laughs> it's a miracle we don't but understand. Yes, yeah. but God, because I put God first, yes. God takes care. Uh -huh. But you have to find a career that you can be passionate about. Uh -huh. It's not just about money. Uh -huh. um, you know, I'm at the school, you know, some people, why are you there so early? I love to teach. Yeah. And I think when I get out of the, the, the way that I can relate to the kids, uh -huh. I'll move on to something else yeah, and, sure. and mm -hmm. because sometimes, you know, especially Bible teachers, this, that's, you know, sometimes Bible teachers stay teaching when they should have been long gone <laughs> because they can't relate yes. to the young people. Yeah. So as you guide your, your students and tell them that they need to find something that, has, that they have a passion mm -hmm. for. Yes. Is that all you tell them, or how do they find where their passion is? No, there, there are some resources that you can go to, and, and it's really interesting because I take the test, too. Oh. You know, there are different tests to find out what your interests are. Mm -hmm. okay. And when you, when you get the results, you go, oh. Sometimes they tell you you're supposed to be a bus driver or, <laughs> you know, whatever. But it, it's very close to what your personal likes, sure. mm -hmm. and they will give you a range of things. There, there are all kinds of resources on, on the Internet that a parent can even go to and say, hey, you know, why don't we sit down and just do this little test? Uh -huh. And they're free. Yeah, yeah. So we just do a search for interest inventory uh -huh. online, and that's a tool that parents can Or even can careers, uh -huh. career interests. Okay. Sure. Because then it'll kind of narrow things down. Maybe you should go in this way, yeah. you know, with, with your likes and your dislikes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Of course, there's another choice that high schoolers have to make, and it's college where to go to college. Do you ever ha have those conversations as to how to go about choosing a college? Yes, um, I, I have two kids uh, and our, as a Seventh-day Adventist, my, my biggest thing was for them to go to an Adventist school. Okay. Um, however, some of our schools don't, don't always have the careers right. that, that are best for the young people. Sure. Mm -hmm. And so I want them to have a basis so that when they, I remember going to, um, I'm not going to mention the college, but I went to a public college mm -hmm. and took a class. And I was just, my, my jaw dropped because I, was, I had never gone uh -huh. to a non-Adventist school. Okay. And the teacher was using profanity. Mm. The books were, had profanity in them. I was like, wow. <laughs> uh, so, you know, I was, and I tell, tell the young people, if you've been, in an Adventist school or even a Christian school from uh -huh. kindergarten through high school, yeah. and all of a sudden you go to a public college, you're gonna understand 
that it's different out it's there. It's culture mm -hmm. shock. Mm -hmm. It is really culture shock. However, you have to make sure that your, your standards, your principles that you have learned, yeah. mm -hmm. because it's going to be easy to be distracted. That's what, Absolutely. And, and one of the things that we've talked about as well is that when you go to one of our colleges, one of, I'm a Seventh-day Adventist mm -hmm. as well, uh, not only are you getting a career, you're also preparing for the future, meaning even eternity, but traditionally it's been also a place to find a possible spouse. And, and, and that's an important uh, conversation that we'd like to have you expound upon because obviously this series is dealing with children 13 years of age all the way up to 18 and 19 when they're headed off to college. Mm. So even with that 13 and 14 year old, Pastor Henry, how do we instill in them the importance of choosing their friends wisely? Mm -hmm. Because those principles, will they not ultimately impact who they're looking at for a future spouse? Yeah. Absolutely. Um, you know, more so back in the day when, you know, when I'm going to say I was in college, I'm not going to say we, when I was in college, you know, a lot of times that's, that was the primary goal to go to college and find a spouse. Yes. Um, that is not the way it is now because a lot of young people are, they want to establish their career first. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of young people are getting married later on in life. Later, yes. yes. And that presents somewhat of a, of a hardship because if you've been living by yourself for 30 years uh -huh. mm -hmm. and you, a career, then all of a sudden you bring somebody into mm -hmm. your home, mm -hmm. it, it, the dynamic is, is very interesting. Yeah. But even in high school, you know, I, some of the young people are dating at 13 and 14, and I look at them and I, you are not ready. Uh -huh. yes, you know, absolutely. what you need to do, yeah. you know, um, date around, and it's not dating around, but go out with different people. Lots but of they're, friendships. But they're going to think I'm a whatever. I'm just, <laughs> you know, I, it doesn't matter. Your, your goal is to get to know different personalities yeah. yes. and be able to choose the ones that you that complement that you can spend mm -hmm. time. I'm not even thinking about marriage, but yes, you are. Yeah. Yes, in yes, the back you of are. Your mind yes. It is. yes. Um, you know, there was a beautiful girl in college. Beautiful. But took her out on one date. This was me. And we had a horrible conversation. Yes. And I said, as beautiful as she was, yes. this was not for me. Right. And right. so you, you move on. And yeah. that's what you need to be doing to develop relationships. But also, you have to understand that your friends have such an impact mm -hmm. on even your success in school. Yes. Very true. Mm -hmm. Pick your friends wisely because they can either lift you up yeah. or they can tear you down. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so you mentioned one thing that, that was interesting to me. You thought this girl was beautiful. The conversation didn't lead you to a further step of attraction or whatever. So what kinds of things would you or do you tell your students about the qualities they should be looking for in a future spouse? Wow. Or at least someone to date. <laughs> well, I, I think that you know, in all real reality, the first thing that you're attracted to is physical. The physical attraction. Uh, and don't, don't divorce yourself. That's the reality. Mm -hmm. right. But then as you get to know the person, how do they react when something isn't going exactly the way they want to? Mm -hmm. um, how do they act uh, when they should be studying? Um, you know, just certain little things that show you more than what's on the outside. Yeah. Because anybody can fake it for sometimes, sometimes. for years. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, In fact, you mentioned the other thing again was the conversation. Yes. So if they look good on the outside, but you can't even have a good conversation, mm -hmm. something that's enjoyable. And you have to understand that's a hard thing in this day and age. <laughs> because with all the, yes, the texting, true. with all the, you know, the shortcuts, I've had young people who have written research papers and have used, oh no, you know, some of the, the yes. short words, yes. LOLs, whatever, LOL. those type of things. And I'm, I'll, I'll give it back. What are you doing? Yeah. Mm -hmm. They're so used to it. Yes. Yeah. And how many times have you seen, uh, you know, people going out to eat and the whole family is, they Very don't talk. Often. Very and often. so we have to develop, we actually have to teach 
the art of conversation. Yes. And I try to do that even in their writing. Mm -hmm. You know, I force them to, you need to give me five sentences, but I can, I can answer it in one. No, no. Think, expand, yeah. be yeah. able to express yourself. Yeah. Because it's more than just the curt, short answers. That's yeah. how you get to know somebody. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Internally deep, not just the outside. You yeah. Know? yeah. When it comes to parents, you probably have had to also talk to them. What would you say to parents to help their kids as they look forward to their future after high school? Well, like one of the one of the parents said on the you know the intro, I think you have to learn not to force them, mm -hmm. but to give them some choices and directions. Mm. Just because it's something that you may want them to do, mm -hmm. that may not be what's best for mm. your child. Sure, true. And that's that's hard as a parent, you know. Man, I see all the potential in my child, yeah. and I know they should go this way. Why aren't they? And you, you, yeah. you know, you try to force them. And sometimes, young people will just because you're trying to force them go the other way. Go the other way. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, until they get older and they go, you know, you were right. But that's that's a very mature later on in life type of decision. Yeah. Yeah. And it's a difficult thing for a parent, again, especially if they have a dream or a goal yeah. in mind. And you always want what's best for your child. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. Um, it's interesting to me also that uh, as, as you teach through the years, you probably have seen changes in the kids. Yes. Could you maybe mention one brief change in the, in the last few seconds that we have? Well, I'm, I'm, I'm a disciplinarian. And I think the young people know you can, any school, any student that I've had, oh man, he was tough, he expects. I'm trying to teach them different things that are just not, it's not just doing what you want to do. Yeah. It's life. These are principles that I'm trying to teach them in life. And they come wow. back and tell you, yeah. thank you. Amazing. Thank you so much for this good insights that you have shared with us today. Thank you. It's been an honor being here. We want to thank Pastor Henry for taking the time to be with us today. And we'd also like to remind you to visit our parenting website, helpamaparent.org. There you will find additional resources and materials. And join us next time on Help I'm a Parent when we will continue the conversation about parenting teens in today's world. Mm -hmm.